Dr. Pekos, let me cut to the chase. These are beginning to be mandates. In your reading of the history of pandemics, can governments mandate business? Absolutely. And in particular, when the safety record, when the efficacy record of those vaccines is, you know, so great, like we have with the COVID-19 vaccines, it's, it's almost more of a crime to not utilize those resources effectively to reduce human suffering. Um, and, and I think we have all of that data right now. It's really now using those tools in the most effective way to get us back to something akin to what we were, life was like before the pandemic. Explain to me how we're having these discussions. We have a president with the intensity we all observed yesterday and we've got 40,000 people in a football stadium. It's just bizarre. Absolutely. I, I, I think part of some of the feelings that we've had this summer, and maybe this was a victim of the, of the COVID-19 vaccine rollout and the high efficacy that we uh, saw with the initial results, uh, people had a sense that irrespective of what they did, the pandemic was over uh, because the vaccines were rolling out and doing well. The, uh, we, we, we've lost the ability to communicate to people that it still is about everybody getting in and involved in that process of getting vaccinated. And right now we're seeing that push. We're, trying, we're seeing people trying to open up and go back to things that are normal. Um, yet some of the things that we're doing right now, we're, we're really not ready to do those kind of things without something like vaccine mandates, without masking mandates uh, to allow us to get into those situations with uh, greater amounts of protection. The other aspect of President Biden's speech was testing and talking about how more uh, rapid tests would be made available in a number of just regular retail stores. Is this the answer that we all wake up, spit into a jar and go about our day? Uh, it, it, it's, it's the effective use of testing. And, you know, we've been part of studies, many studies are out there that really can dictate how many times a week you can test to pick up cases relatively early and before significant spread is done. So testing can be a part of this. Um, as with vaccination, it has to be implemented effectively and there have to be you know, safeguards to make sure that people are following the testing procedures uh, clearly and effectively and the test results have to come back quickly because testing on a every other day basis if the results don't come back for three days yeah. is really pointless. Dr. Pekosh, I say this as a lot of people head back to school, a lot of children, people under the age of 12 who are not able to get <clears throat> vaccinated under the current protocol and they are all spitting into jars and taking a variety of different tests to try to protect everybody that they sit with. What is the answer? Why, why has it taken so long and why is there so little clarity around vaccinating uh, the underage, uh, the under 12 crew? Well, the under 12 population um, is a little bit more is more complex uh, issue in terms of dealing with the safety and the efficacy there. Um, new formulations of the vaccine are being tested in that population. Mm. Um, we know that um, some of the rel relatively rare adverse effects um, with the vaccine do tend towards younger populations. So I think the FDA was very, very cautious about making sure that yeah. enough people were there in those studies to be able to judge not only efficacy, but the safety in, in, in a great manner. Uh, Dr. So, Peck, well, I don't mean to interrupt, but I got to do a surveillance correction. I mentioned 40,000 in Tampa Bay uh, last night. It was 65,566. I want you to review, Dr. Pekos, right now what COVID does to a 35-year-old male in Tampa Bay. Somebody had to get sick last night, right? Uh, absolutely. And our data, particularly with the Delta variant, is suggesting that severe disease is skewing to younger populations. Um, and those individuals between the ages of 20 and 49 or so that were initially spared a high rate of severe disease in the initial waves of the pandemic are not coming down with severe disease at a much higher mm. rate. And let's not forget long COVID, which can affect people even with mild disease. And people can suffer symptoms from that for weeks and months after infection. So severe disease, long COVID, everything is skewing to a younger population. People who think they're healthy and don't need the vaccine are just need to get aware of the potential risk and how it's increasing with the Delta variant being the primary virus that's circulating here in the US. Doctor, what data have we got on outdoor transmission if you do gather together in a stadium like that one? 
Uh, outdoor transmission is still much less likely than indoor transmission. Uh, when you look at a stadium, uh, one, one does have to realize that it's not 100%. People sitting right next to each other, one person sitting immediately behind you um, is, po does pose a threat. Uh, when you move into indoor areas, lines for concession stands, those types of things, you're moving into situations where there are greater risks. And so you can't just look at one issue. These have to be their multifaceted issues and having a mask mandate allows you to protect against the weak link in all those things, um, in all those events and, and those kind of things.